Hello. Welcome to Microsoft Cloud Option webinar series. Thank you very much for joining and listening. My name is Vivek Bhatnagar. I am CTO and founder of Unify Cloud. There are a lot of people ask me that uh, why we need a formal approach and other thing. Uh, the first reason we need a formal approach or method is because cloud modernization migration is, is typically a complex thing. So you need uh, you need a lot of factors to work together. So you need a cultural and technical changes in your, in the organization. And, and there are a lot of steps in doing, and and there are a lot of possibility of, of a mistake here. So that's why using a formal framework, formal approach is is where is one of the one of the way you can you can mitigate the risk. This slide uh, shows alignment of customer cloud journey and Microsoft Cloud Option framework. Uh, this is like a summary build on a very high level flow to establish like iterative process and the tool that can facilitate like lift and shift or optimization efforts and modernization efforts into single approach across all cloud migration activities. So, uh, but I'm just including this slide to give you a, a complete uh, brief on what tools you have available and at all the stages and how these are aligned with uh, your working with the account. So I believe that you are from a partner organization or Microsoft organizations and you are working with a customer at cloud. And so how you align these tools with the journey with the customer. OK, so we have completed at least the first part of our agenda, introducing you cloud adoption framework. I'm going to maybe have the same part repeating uh, in my nearly all the other other presentations, but I might go a little faster. So let's look at like uh, talk about uh, more about cloud strategy. So first thing first, like why we are really need a cloud strategy or formal approach. And so as I discussed before, that uh, technologies like cloud, AI, or 5G, or all similar technologies that which we are listening a lot uh, in this COVID-19 scenario or even the post-COVID-19, uh, these are all means to create a digital transformation or or a modernization uh, strategy for for a customer. So like these are just a means to help them in, in digitally transform their processes, uh, their businesses, so that they are more successful in this new era. Uh, therefore, the cloud strategy is is a is a formal or or a you can say a, a formal method and approach. So that people can understand that what actually they, they're trying to do in this modernization journey. In case a company start a digital transformation journey without a formal approach, uh, it is most likely they're going to face an issue, face like multiple issues. Most common issues which I have seen with such companies, uh, problem with the cost, like cost overrun, their problems in efficiencies in their dev and uh, dev teams, and then their lack of decision making in, in the very senior level. And they, this all lead to a, a lot of uh, wrong or very costly decisions, which will actually delay the uh, business outcome. Therefore, we we always say that that let's have a formal approach for uh, digital transformation for for cloud modernization migration. Um, in this slide, like uh, I have given at least uh, four major pillars where where we can actually sum up. Um, some of like like potential pitfalls. So one of the pitfall which I have seen nearly nearly all the companies is higher cost. Customer go and take journey to the cloud with the understanding of they're going to they're going to save cost and other things, but they find that because they are not following a formal approach, they're not doing everything right. Their cost sometime out of the control, and then they come back and and talk to their partners and and say like why I'm spending that much money. It, you, they are spending that much money because they have not planned things properly. They have not actually governing their infrastructure correctly. Similarly, in dev organization, we have seen that there is there is no reuse of the code. There is no re reuse of the common services, and there are a lot of efficiency in their in development environment for the companies. And finally, a lot of companies are missing important point of documenting their architectural decisions or standard architecture, and then then suffer with their decision framework. Sometimes these these like decisions are very very costly because if you go and select a wrong way to implement identity in the cloud, it's going to be it's going to be very very difficult to 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 basically come back and repair it. Or if you have taken a 
uh, around decision of of securing your cloud environment for selected for example like you selected a a wrong type of firewall other thing which is not suitable for your environment and then you spend millions of dollars to implement that and finally to come to an conclusion that's not working so these are very important decisions and and you cannot take them in a right unless until you have a standard decision framework then adding all those things are, are basically delayed a business outcome because you uh, we all are answerable to to the seniors in the companies or stakeholders and and if we are not able to deliver on what we have promised before starting the cloud journey, it would be very difficult for organization to move forward. So these are the uh, a common pitfalls for not having a cloud strategy or for not having a formal approach to based on any framework, other things. But it, it, not only these, like uh, having a formal uh, approach or formal strategy or formal best practices will also help with other things. For example, like it will help you in, in, uh, in defining your architecture standards. It will help you in building cloud policies. Cloud policy example means like, how do you control cost? How do you have disaster recovery in place? What will happen if the cloud connection broken or where's the backup stored, which, which country you are going to store your data and other thing. And similarly, like uh, it will also help you aligning with the business outcomes, other thing. Uh, the formal way also help you in taking decisions around their, your application design. So if, if you are moving to the cloud, your application need to adopt cloud architecture, or at least native cloud architecture capabilities. Then you need to also put together a standard way of architecting those application things or a standard guidance for everybody into the company, how they select different architecture like SaaS, PaaS, or IS. And finally, like how do you differentiate an opportunity to to innovate. So this is very important because cloud uh, not only help you to reduce cost, but it also open up new opportunity, new market, and also help uh, in in improving a company revenue substantially by innovation. So where uh, you should apply innovation, how you can use the cloud innovation to help your company objectives, that all would be fall in place at least in a formal process. If you follow a formal framework, for example, like Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, and using that framework, you can document your cloud strategy and other parts of the cloud. So with this, like, let's look at how cloud adoption framework help us in defining strategy. So this is a slide where uh, I have listed down the four processes. Uh, cloud adoption framework suggests an approach to build a cloud strategy based on these four processes. By using this approach, you can drive adoption effort that capture target business values in a cross-functional environment in a company. You can, you can then map your cloud adoption strategy to a specific cloud capabilities and business strategies to reach your desired state of transformation. Uh, the first thing here, like understanding the motivations, like what are the motivation to move to the cloud in the first place, why a company would like to move, Secondly, map these motivation to a, to a business outcome, which can be defined very specifically. That the, these are the business outcomes we are, we are going to go. And then where is the business justification to have those outcomes in as part of the company strategy? And finally, how we can use uh, motivation, business outcome, and business justification to drive actually selecting the first workload to move the cloud and how, what other criteria is in addition to this that we have to look at when we go and recommend to the first, uh, first project. Okay, let's talk about like uh, all of these one by one, and then we will actually talk about the first project before we jump into different, uh, uh, you can say, examples and tools. So let's talk about uh, first thing first, like why, why all this, like, you know, we, we, have, we, have, we have cloud and other things. Uh, I have written one line, which which actually I like it. I like it most. It is from uh, a German philosopher. His name is uh, Nietzsche, and he has written a lot of famous quote. But one of the quote which I like most, like he has written that he who has a why can live for can be a almost any bow. So that's very important. So if you can answer why cloud, then actually, then you are actually your chances of success increasing substantially. Uh, 
knowing why and its understanding is, is, a, is a really a very important step in a journey of digital transformation. Uh, it will not only decide business outcome, but also suggest an approach for modernization. Yeah. And if, if you ask why we are moving to the cloud, uh, to, a, to a, like a business owner or technical stakeholder, and in the answer you get that our board, CIO or CEO or any C-level executive told us to move to the cloud, then you can very easily assume that it is unlikely that the business will achieve the desired outcome. Because that's the answer you should not be getting if you answer why we are moving to the cloud. So okay, so let's let's look at like uh, uh, what are the reasons uh, company uh, moved to the cloud and 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 what are the several motivations uh, behind it. Uh, here we are listed all the motivation typically like into into like three main categories and there might be more but like mostly like these three categories um, that we would like to think of because and then we can drive like a, a way of of this impacting this to this the first thing is is critical business event and this can be like any critical business event. maybe they would uh, people would like to close down their existing uh, existing data center there would be any they have bought a new company or they have reduction in into any of these uh, capital expenses, regulatory compliances, recent disruptions, uh, any any such critical event, or even COVID-19. You know, because of COVID-19, lot of private, a lot of companies are not able to maintain their private data centers. And the, the employees are not able to go in in there for necessary maintenance, and and they have a lot of issues. So any of the critical business event, uh, which may be maybe like any end of the support other thing, can be a can be this. The second motivation trigger is is the cost saving. Like you know, these are migration triggers. Migration triggers means like these are not the critical business, but these are the things or, or the business drivers and other things that you are facing, like cost saving, reduction in vendor or technical complexity, now like optimization of internal operations, increase business agility, prepare a new technical capabilities or scale to meet the any of the geography demands. So these are the migration triggers and, and it's very easy to recognize and, and if you if you if you have any of these then you can actually ask them how they are linked to the business outcomes and other thing. Lastly and one of the most important uh, way of uh, of starting a migration is innovation triggers and these are uh, these are like becoming more and more common as we uh, as we uh, are basically getting mature in in a cloud space. Uh, for example, a company think about improving the customer experience or maybe transforming their product and services and offer to a very large market or prepare a new technical capabilities which will disturb the, uh, which will like disrupt the whole market uh, with the product and services. All those fall into innovation triggers. So objective is to recognize that why, why a company would like to move to the cloud. And if, if that why fall into a business event, critical business event, or as a migration trigger or innovation trigger. Uh, understanding the why like the is important because I will demo, I will tell you like how it is impacting your next phase of migration. That it will, uh, this why will going to impact your planning, your readiness phase and migration phase, all three of those because approach you take typically uh, to, to overcome a critical business event is different from migration trigger. It different for innovation trigger. So all uh, every time these there are three approaches which actually help you in fulfilling these triggers. They are different investment of time and other thing. So it's important to look at uh, these motivation and understand. The secondly, like how do we how do we define uh, this business outcome? So so like uh, the most successful transformational journey start with the business outcome in mind. Cloud option can be a very costly and time consuming effort. Fostering high level of support from IT and other areas of business is very crucial for the success of the of the any cloud migration. And during migration, it is crucial. It is like ability to speak in terms of a business outcome, support a lot of transparency and cross functional partnership. So if you can use this language, and, and talk to the stakeholders, even technical or business, you will see that there's a lot of success in gaining their support. Uh, that's what we are we are trying to build the 
telling you that what are the business outcome how to use these uh, these uh, these vocabulary when you discuss this and typically it also depends who you are talking to so you can for example if you're talking to your finance leader in a company then you should talk about the terms they understand talk about profitability and talk about like how you can be more profitable in, in while driving the compliances in the cloud if you're talking to your marketing head talk about how you can how this strategy can help him in acquiring and retain customers how can how can the company reputation can be increased after going to the cloud similarly if you are talking to your sales head talk about how you can how this cloud is going to accelerate their sales how can it can improve the customer lifetime values and other thing and finally if you are talking to hr and they are important stakeholders here because they have to hire the proper skills and other thing uh, tell them that how cloud can actually help them retaining recruiting and empower employees and other thing so based on person you you need to make sure that uh, we can we can actually um, you can talk to the in their languages and you can actually explain them how the things uh, are going to be better once the company in the crowd so uh, in addition to this persona these all business outcome can be into a into multiple categories so uh, these are the typically six categories and that we would like to quantify a business outcome and quantify a business outcome means like these are very specific outcome which will actually can be num can be put into a specific numbers and all the most important outcome which everybody focus is physical how much how much uh, help we will get in increasing revenue once we are in a cloud how much saving would be how much capital expenditure how much is the operational uh, expenditure and how it is going to impact our our profit into year 1 to year 5 so a lot of questions in the physical form and um, what i have seen that majority in engagement which which we have done uh, fiscal outcome has taken priority on everything, uh, but like nowadays, as we move to the second phase of the cloud migrations, uh, people are start talking about other aspects. For example, uh, agility, like how many times, uh, you, how fast you can go to the market, uh, how fast you can react to the business changes or conditions uh, that 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 is going to happen, like in this post uh, post nineteen era. Uh, now similarly, uh, a lot of more talk about the reach because uh, right now, due to compliance, uh, making making our products available globally is, is a challenge because they are all are following different rules. Uh, you know, there are different rules in Germany, China, United States, and everywhere. So how do you ensure that cloud can help you be compliant and you can still sell your product and services in those areas? Uh, customer engagement is is one of the one of the one most important discuss things that how cloud can help uh, in meeting customer expectations and it may come into any form like you know maybe maybe availability of the business systems maybe they're reacting to the customer's demand maybe providing them better support maybe providing them support in 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 non peak hours all those fall into customer like customer uh, engagement outcome. Now, then do we talk about performance? Uh, these are outcome is like mainly high availability, uh, global uh, reach, and global application. And this, these are mostly discussed that uh, that SLAs or disaster recovery and other parameters come into it. Finally, people talk about security and compliance. That how good we can do a compliance and security ones in the cloud and and understand the, the things and. Bit of how it works.